What do you miss most about the lifestyle in Asia? And should you move back? Let's discuss. No, stay loyal to America. But on the other hand, you might find a better life in the motherland. We got to talk about this Reddit post. Does anybody miss the Asian lifestyle? I know that Asian and American cultures both have pros and cons, but I miss the good parts of living in Asian culture. Like it's safe to walk everywhere at night, great transportation systems. Uh, Yeah, I mean, America's great too, but you have to drive everywhere. It's not safe in a lot of places. And there's a sedentary lifestyle lifestyle of watching TV. All right, everybody, we got a list from the comment section what people responded to because this was a pretty long list. And I honestly, I think this topic comes up quite often about especially Asian Americans or people who grew up in the West who like go back to Asia and they're like, they come back and they have these Asia withdrawals. So I guess we're going to go through a list of what people mostly miss about the Asia lifestyle. And then you guys in the comments down below can also let us know what you miss about Asia. Real quick, let's run some clips of Asia. Look, listen, those are some enticing clips, but we do have to preface this by saying he's uh, these the, what, the lifestyle he's referring to is not like being a poor villager back in Asia, right? right? He's saying what? Being an elevated expat coming back in at a middle, possibly even upper middle or light rich status in a major metropolitan zone of Asia. Right. I mean, uh, I would almost go and say in 2024, living a life as what? would rank as a upper middle class person in any city in the world would be pretty good or there's some life there. But of course, if you're Asian and you're in Asia, there's obviously that whole cultural connection. I do think being a poor villager in Asia is even worse than being the equivalent of being a poor villager in America. That is 100% true. I would agree with that. Obviously, America is still the land of opportunity and you can move up economically so many levels here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he in this post is mostly referring to the big cities, not limited to these, though, Tokyo, Seoul, Shanghai, Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh, Beijing, you know, like the the tier one cities of their country. Right, but he could be talking about Bali, though, Jakarta. That's true, That's true. Bali, I mean, the lifestyle's good. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, those are generally the cities that everybody's like, oh my gosh, like, the life is so good there. Blah, right, blah, right, blah. right. But people are looking at lesser known places like Kuala Lumpur and stuff now, too, in 2024. That's true. I don't want to forget about Singapore. Although, Singapore and Tokyo are not super cheap you know, per dollar, you know. Right, right. Probably as expensive as the West, but probably safer, more public transportation. Let's just get into the list. Andrew, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Sauce at Amazon.com. Number one, Andrew, safety. He says, I miss walking outside and having people all over around me, but still feeling safe. I'm not looking over my shoulder because some idiot doesn't like Asian and wants to fight. Plus, no obnoxious loud music blaring anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would definitely say the crowds in Asia, generally, you feel safe. Obviously, you know... They're still pickpocketing in crowded places, but yeah, maybe if you're in Tokyo, you're not quite thinking about the pickpocketing, but maybe if you're in a different city. But, but I heard even, Andrew, even Bangkok 15 years ago, a lot of pickpockets, 2024, a lot less. Yes, for sure, for sure. I don't uh, want to say that there's zero, and I don't want to say there's a lot, I, but there's a lot less. I will provide a caveat, though, Andrew, the obnoxious loud music blaring. That could vary on district to district, country to country. No, but I'll say this. In America, as far as blasting loud music off your little scooter, your e-bike, or a car, 
very much more common in America. Nobody's going to be playing it off their phone on the bus, for sure, or less so in Asia, for sure. Yeah, but the party, Asia, the party areas in Asia are still pretty loud. They're even, like, in a way, even more controlled chaos, but right. less chaotic at the bottom end. Um, point number two, I definitely just miss the subways and the cheap taxi. I miss... Uh, everything being close by or even just grabbing a motorcycle taxi like a grab or something <laughs> oh, like that. Oh man, like a Gojek. I was in Jakarta. You're just ordering Gojeks off your phone and then this guy pulls up with a little green helmet and you just hop on their back. Or you know, the in China, the moto chairs. You know, like I, I think that that's the type of thing that trust in society where you're like, I'm gonna hop on this guy's back. Not in his car. You know, in America, even like, you know, Ubers are taxis, like people who found some mistrust and then Ubers came in town and they were supposed to be more trustworthy because they're all like identified and stuff like that. But like in America, you would never hop on someone's motorcycle. No, there would never be a moto, uh, motorcycle taxi service. Right. And also, by the way, motorcycles out there, they drive way slower. Like traffic is slower in Asia. Like people don't drive as fast. It's people slower, but there's more weaving though. I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. Traffic is a controlled chaos in, in Asia. It's, it's usually more chaotic, minus like Tokyo, but the people are not driving as fast. Right, right, right. Obviously, the weaving, it's different. Like Taipei, there's less weaving than Thailand. Right. Um, number three, this guy says, just it's really about affordability. Getting all the things that I want in America, which is like having a really nice city, would be like Irvine would be like super expensive. But over there, getting the same accommodations and the same safety rating for the neighborhood I'm in costs a lot less. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're probably going to miss out on obviously the American institutions, the schooling's going to be different for your kids. But if you don't have kids and you just want to live in a clean, neighborhood that has good food and is safe just those things it's going to be hard to beat asia right 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 by the way guys i got a email newsletter for people who want to do something big in the east check it out in the description below i'm gonna pop it up right here uh moving on point number four andrew this guy says you know it's crazy because in America, in places like the Bay Area, we can get a quite a bit of Asian culture and Asian restaurants, but it still feels very different from Asia. Like the, the flow of life in the Bay doesn't feel like Asia, even though there's Asian restaurants and Asian people everywhere. Okay, so he's saying, I'm bummed out that America's not Asia. I would argue this though, there are certain city blocks or stretches in America that feel like where, Asia. Where are they? Where are they? Flushing downtown, okay, between Main Street, Roosevelt Ave. That feels like China, to be honest. Uh, you go to uh, 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 K-Town, New York. I know it's very short, but within that two blocks, or even that one block, it kind of feels like Korea. Shock, shockingly like Seoul, I yeah, would say. Yeah, it's, it's stacked up high. It's kind of crammed, you know. Um, I would say Koreatown, LA, certain plazas are like fully Korean. Um, I would say in parts of the San Gabriel Valley, 626, it's going to be more suburban and spread out. But it literally, I mean, like you go to San Gabriel, you got plazas that are just fully Chinese of different types of Chinese. Right, right, right. I, th I would say Garden Grove, maybe does it feel like Vietnam, maybe like a real, a certain part of it, but it would be a little bit more spread out. Obviously the Bay Area in Houston, also super Asian. And uh, does, it doesn't feel like Asia though, because of the spread out suburbia, uh, suburban sprawl. And Hawaii feels like Japanese took over Penang, Malaysia or something like mm. that. That's like how Hawaii feels to me. Point number five, this guy says, I miss the night markets and I really miss just a lot of different fruits. Wow. Fruits the at the markets. night market too. Yo, night markets are really fun. I get it. You know, I mean, they have the 626 night market, with this, which is huge over in the San Gabriel Valley. It doesn't feel like Asia. It's very, you know, Americanized and mixed. But overall, it does kind of give you that crazy vibe. They have the Queens night market sometimes that during the summer. Like That's kind of like feels... Kind of like some part of Asia. Yeah, but yeah, but that is just only in the summertime. I'm talking about like every night. Yeah. Well, again, you know, American safety and suburbanness is not going to really make for a year long night market, to be honest. Like, uh, it, wouldn't it have to be in like Florida or something? I'm trying to think of where it could be because it'd have to be somewhere where the, the weather is pretty warm. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it could be in LA, but nowhere is dense enough for it in LA. 
I don't know. Right, right, right. Um, somebody just said, what are your options if you would want to move to Asia, but you can't? Somebody said you could move to a walkable city in the U.S., for example, New York, Chicago, Philly. Um, I think New York is probably the best one of those two, Chicago, Philly. But yeah, obviously in any big city, you're going to have crime. I actually think... To be honest, New York has the least crime out of those three. Get politically active in your current city to turn it into an urbanist policy, a walkable city. That sounds like that's like a three-decade project. Yeah, good luck with that. Right, become an activist. And then, of course, move to Asia as a digital nomad or immigrant expat. Yeah, or like I said, I would say San Gabriel Valley. Fairly affordable. Right, fairly. I know it's the LA area, but it's outside of LA. It's it's the end of Los Angeles County. I would say the six two six. If you want to be around, if you're Chinese, particularly okay. But they all or or of the Chinese diaspora of the Chinese diaspora, right? But I'm saying like, if you happen to be of some sort of Chinese descent, I would say the six two six is the most affordable, very Asian easy place to live right 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 it's probably the craziest cross section obviously if you got a ton of bread irvine something like that number seven this guy just said i miss the asian food there's more variety and i thought that this was a really interesting point because i agree with it and i don't because i think sometimes asian zones in america have more diversity because there's more different types of asians owning the restaurants than there would be in asia yeah, and I, I agree, and we always say this, that's why, like, places like the 626 or even Westminster or, like, any sort of Asian Bel Air in Houston. I mean, Bel Air Ave, Queens, uh, Jackson Heights. We're talking Mil- about Flushing. Milpitas. Yeah, and, like, these places, like, yes, maybe it's the depth of that, like, Sichuan cuisine is not as deep as you would find in Chengdu, obviously, but you're going to get a Sichuan restaurant ran by Chinese people next to a Filipino restaurant, next to a Malaysian restaurant, next to a Korean restaurant in Asia, that would actually be very hard to find. Right, because it's more of a microcosm of the whole whole of Asia versus just a region of one country. And you have to understand, when immigrants come to America, they are also trying to make it and work very hard. So, of course, they're going to bring some pretty good products. So, to me, there's certain plazas in the San Gabriel Valley where you can get, like, seven different Asian cuisines, and they're all pretty good in one plaza. Point number eight, this guy was talking about growing up in a major Asian city, and he loved that he had all the amenities, going to the concerts, going to all the cultural events of a city, but without any, in his words, the killing, kidnapping, drugs, and fights of the Western world. However, he says working as an adult, he's much happier with his pay, job, and work-life balance in the West. Well, sounds like nowhere's perfect, huh, bro? Right, right, right. And it's interesting because some Asian Americans that grew up in the suburbs in the West are now moving to the major metropolitan cities in Asia in their adult life. Mm. So it's almost just a, you know, like a vice versa. I mean, at the end of the day, man, it really depends on your situation. Number nine, he said, man, why are people just so aggressive in the U.S.? I just noticed that. Like, everybody's aggressive when they do everything here. Uh, Compared to Asia... Yeah, I mean, we except live- bargaining. Bargaining is less <laughs> aggressive in America. Man, in New York, yeah, some you got to step up. On, you got to learn. Yeah, I know it's it's uh, people can be aggressive. Yeah, it depends on the city too. It no, I'm not gonna deny. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna deny. No, uh, I, I think so. Number ten, someone said, "Why do we have to tip?" I just hate tipping and living in a car centric society. But really, it's tipping because in Asia, would you agree, Andrew? It's true that almost nobody tips. Yeah, it's not commonplace. I mean, I think you can at nice restaurants, um, but it'd be so uncommon to do it at like a mom and pop. In Sometimes there's a small service fee that's already built in, maybe like 4% or yeah, something Yeah, I mean, like that. I, so in Paris, uh, what they do is like there's a sit-in fee, which is just a few euros, like a few dollars, right? And then um, you don't have to tip. So there is a slightly added fee, but it doesn't even add up to the tip. So it's like if you order a lot... I think the sit-down fee is the same. So it's like flat rate. You know what I mean? So overall, in Europe, when I ate the same food as America, it came out to be slightly cheaper, at least in New York, because I didn't have to do tip. This person, last comment, said, I miss leaving my purse at a table or a chair when I'm out and not having to worry that it'll get stolen. Clean public transit, high-speed but low-cost internet, better low-cost skincare and healthcare options. Yeah, I mean... Uh, by the way, this depends on which country you go back to. Like, yeah, there's certain places you cannot eight, put your purse... You should not be leaving your wallet and purse out in every city. I mean, any city, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do it. But, yes, obviously, different Asian cities, uh, you, you'd feel more comfortable. But, yeah, I mean, 
But, but, sure. but, Andrew, there's some things that people don't miss. Real quick, somebody said, I really do not miss the work culture of Asia. For example, there are certain plumbers that rise up the ranks and own a plumbing company and make more than a Harvard grad in America. There's no way that's ever happening in Asia. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. The, one of the richest guys I ever uh, serviced cell phones at, he owned like 25 Papa Murphys when I was growing up in my hometown, Andrew. There's no way... Like, if you own 25 Papa Murphys, you probably make more than somebody who, like, gra- not everybody, but graduated from Harvard. Yeah. That's not going to happen in Asia, generally. Um, somebody said, I don't miss the tropical monsoon season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they got different weather over there. I mean, you're talking about, like, Singapore, Taiwan. But, uh, even Japan got, like, tsunamis. Oh, that's true. Right. I mean, they just got different weather over there, right? And no, no, the weather's not necessary. Somebody said, I like driving, and I love the American suburbs. They have everything that I could po- possibly want to do here. Dude, some people like driving. I mean, some people feel very connected to the car ride, the open road, the driving. You're in a vehicle. You're like on your horse. You know what I mean? You mean exploring the Western frontier. You know, it's just a man in his iron horse. Somebody said, if you like all that stuff, though, you can go to Canada, Australia, also other places such as Berlin or Vienna, obviously places in Europe as well. Yeah, that's true. It just depends. It depends on what lifestyle you like. If you like that crowded, chaotic environment, of like New York City, Andrew, but you want it without all the violence, that's really more Asia than Europe. Yes, true, 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 true. And then, of course, that guy just says, listen, in New York, there's even in a place like New York City or places in America, you can ha- mitigate the downsides, too, of like crime and stuff, but you just need a ton of money and connections. Right, right, right. Do you think that's true that everybody, every, the, all the things that people say about America and like public spaces... Obviously, like, the richest people, they're not always in public spaces, right? They have security. They have different neighborhoods, uh, buildings with triple layers of security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I think it depends on the amount of money you have, but how you spend that money and the connections and and how you deploy it. Ultimately, I'll say this, man. Right now, I think it's a really crazy time because Asia is finally getting a lot of amenities, Andrew, that are on par Possibly, Andrew, even beyond what is available in the West. Yeah, and sometimes why Asia has even better amenities sometimes is because they know the they're not going to get destroyed like in America. Like people, if things are left outside, Americans will just eventually like kind of like destroy them, which is kind of weird. But also in Asia, they're having so much expat money and overseas money from visitors, even from, you know, high earning Western countries that... Yeah, the stuff is getting better, dude. I mean, you could look up Google, like, in Bangkok, like, the best spas, the most affordable spas, the middle-level ones of, like, all these amenities. You can get these high-rise buildings for for very cheap, and they're clean, you know? Um, yeah, so it's, like, that's why I think so many people are going, you know? And But I will say this, like, one thing, a side note that I don't miss about Asia, personally, is, like, I guess it was weird at first to see so many like poor Asians in poverty. You know how like there are poor Asians in New York, but like there's a lot in Asia. Yeah, I mean the whole society is Asian. Yeah, and the poorest people are Asian. So uh, yeah, I the guess I people, just they're like yeah, it's 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 get, depending on where you are. It could, yeah, it, it could, could be a start, little yeah. jarring. You know, it's like Asian, like an Asian mother and her baby on the street on a rug, and then like you know like crying, and maybe the baby's got like a deformation or something you know what i mean like it's just it's just it's some jarring imagery but i i think yeah that's something you have to get over when you go to asia obviously right 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 but you know it, i think you got to look at your own situation what are your capacities to make u.s dollars while living in asia with a lower quality i mean lower cost of life with a higher quality of life with more amenities and things like that six months in six months out and uh listen guys leave your email in the newsletter box below uh if you guys want more information on something that I am planning on building out in Asia, because right now, Andrew, it's a great time for Asia. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, I always say this, whether you should move to Asia or not, it kind of just depends. Like if you have a good job, whether it's work from home or you get a job over there, you can move anywhere. A good job kind of settles you in. You know, it's a system. It gets you started. You have a salary. Obviously you get to live like an upper middle class person out there. If you have a good job. And especially if you don't need to do a lot of like droogs, you know, all that stuff that is very illegal more in Asia that tends to be easier to get in America. If you don't need to shoot a lot of guns, I know they have gun ranges in Asia that are super controlled, but if you don't need to own a gun, then yeah, you don't need to, you know, then Asia's pretty awesome. 
So. Right? So, hey, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. What do you miss about the Asian lifestyle? Also, you can talk about what you don't miss and what you think is better in your lifestyle here in the West. And, uh, yeah, everybody's got to balance it out for themselves. But, again, leave me your email in the uh, link in the description below if you want to get more information on some course that I'm building out. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.